So you know how we're all really super excited to have the Orville back and we have a new episode coming up Thursday? Well, let's not get too excited because there is still some Star Trek, even if it's in name only, coming up as well. If you are um, foolish enough to to pay for CBS All Access, you get access to this. Oh, let, let's just let's just get into this. Oh, so so, so they're making the the short trek of Harry Mudd, where he's supposed to be escaping that Klingon D seven battle cruiser prison ship, whatever the crap they decided to call it, and yeah, that. There, there's an interview. Let's just, let's just read it. Also, hello everyone. I am Mecha Random Forty Two, your favorite YouTube harpy, and I do have to put a trigger warning. If you do love Discovery, I might not be the person to listen to talk about Discovery. I am a little bit um. Y- y- let, let's just say I like the Orville better. <sighs> let, let's let's get into this article, shall we? This Thursday, the final short film in the Star Trek Short Trek series arrives, titled. The Escape Artist. The episode focuses on intergalactic con man Harry Mudd, played by Rain Wilson. Wilson is the second actor to play Mudd following Roger C. Carmel in Star Trek The Original Series. He also steps behind the camera to direct The Escape Artist based on script from Mike McMahon. Mac- 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 I can't say your name. I'm so sorry. The Rick and Morty writer who's also developing the animated comedy Star Trek Lower Decks. Oh, so if you haven't seen my video about the Star Trek Lower Decks, I will link that in the description below, my little reaction to it. Let's sum it up. I'm not a fan of Rick and Morty. I understand it has its fan base. It just, the humor just doesn't sit well with me for whatever reason. I don't know. There's just something about it that's not for me, but I understand it has its fan base. Does it belong anywhere near Star Trek? Hell no. No, 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 no. It does not belong anywhere near Star Trek. The two don't mix. It's like pouring sriracha on, um, oh, oh, what's something you wouldn't pour sriracha on? A peppermint candy cane, for example. You know, you, you just don't mix some things. Some things are good, you know, separated with other things. So that's my kind of feelings on that. Yeah. <sighs> man. <laughs> comicbook.com, owned by CBS, by the way, comicbook.com, spoke to Wilson about directing his episode of Short Treks, taking over Harry Mudd from Carmel, and what Mudd's future may look like. <sighs> so, you know, I, I did review, um, like, the first half of season one of Discovery on the channel, back when I was even still a gaming channel, and I, yeah, that, I, I, ooh. I did not enjoy the Harry Mudd episodes, even though I did enjoy his performance as Harry Mudd, even though it's completely different, not different than the original, like completely different than the original. I did. I think I remember enjoying his performance a bit. He was probably my least um, irritant part of the episode that he was in or the two episodes he was in. Yeah, yeah, but mm, I don't know. I, I have kind of mixed feelings on the Harry Mudd character, I think, at this point. Comicbook.com, your your episode of short, Star Trek Short Trek is unique in that both you star and direct. How did that come to be the case? Rain Wilson responds, well, to be quite honest with you, it fell into my lap. Honestly, we had been talking about bringing mud back and, and the possibility of other mud episodes on Discovery. How did, how mud could play the part in the future? Then all of a sudden I got sent the script. It was a brilliant script, really funny, some great twists and turns, a wonderful surprise ending, obviously. <laughs> oh, this is what I'm worried about. It's going to be really funny. You know, we have funny. It's called the Orville. I, I don't, I don't know that they can do funny on this. I mean, I, like I said, this is, this is really going to be an indicator of, of if the animated Upper Decks, Lower, lower Decks series, I always call it Upper Decker, the Lower Decks series will be any good if this episode is just cringe humor or if it's like actually funny and I I think to me I I felt sometimes Rick and Morty could be cringe humor I understand it does have its fan base I don't want to be like speak really negatively of it because like I, I I totally get why people like it yeah but man oh lord this this is what I'm worried about so they, they were like, you want to direct and star in it? 
it was just an incredible opportunity because I had directed three episodes of The Office, but the office, is, but the office is, let's face it, it's pretty simple to direct. What side of the desk do you want to have the two cameras on, you know? Essentially, this was much more challenging. Uh, how much can I pack into these short tracks? They're 15 minutes. You can't do a lot with that without it sounding super rambly like the Tilly episode, Runaway. Oh. Uh, what was that like working on such a big budget heavy effect production well well these see that's the thing about the short tracks they were kind of meant to be no budgeters bottle episodes something they could just film on existing sets with actors that happen to be around I learned a lot I really truly did we had all of those flashbacks to various mud and various places that needed to feel in the same world but in very different worlds at the same time the same universe but very different worlds they allowed me to hire a storyboard artist it's the first time I ever worked with a storyboard artist which really helped me a lot figure out visually how do I want to tell the story so much of the story is set on that Tellarite ship spoilers thank you oh god I, wait oh. So now we're going to bring in, the, we're, we're going to shoehorn the Tellarites in. They weren't even in the episode. They weren't in the prison with them, I don't believe. No, because it was him and his little, little, his little, like, praying mantis rat thing, Stuart. And then Ash Tyler, Vok, the Klingon. <sighs> How do I make it not get boring <laughs> to have so much... Take um to have so much uh, talking on that Tellarite ship, but visually mix up each scene. Oh no, are we gonna have long scenes in 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 Tellarite, whatever language they speak? I don't even remember. It's, it's probably Tellarite. For for very long uncut subtitle sequences. Please don't, please don't. I don't I don't want fifteen minutes of you know, fifteen minutes of Vogon poetry would be better. Oh, finding different angles and different ways of shooting it, but making it all feel like a piece at the same time. I learned a lot about visual effects and special effects. I don't know what the budget was they spent on the short or they had all allotted for it. He doesn't know the budget? They didn't show me any of the number. Oh, this is a bad sign. Star Trek, th this this really like goes back to the whole Nicholas Meyer interview with Midnight's Edge. If you haven't seen that, totally check that out. He, he basically kind of indicated that nobody knew who was in charge at one point in time. If they're still kind of at that point now with these short tracks where, where they don't even know that they, they, you, you can't not show the director of your episode, the budget. Oh Lord, this is, this is horrible. <sighs> well, there's a title for the video, Star Trek in, in Star Trek Discovery in Worse Trouble Than We Thought. They still don't know. These, these were shot recently, these short tracks. Well, this, this is kind of confirms everything that people like Doomcock and Midnight's Edge have been saying. That, yeah, they don't know what the crap they're doing behind the scenes over there at Discovery. Oh, they have visual effects. Um, they have the visual effects house and the composer and their costume wardrobe department. And the props department uh, can build anything you want. Uh, it immediately made this, this short feel like a giant production. Well, yeah, I, didn't, they, didn't they say... Haven't we been hearing that they spent the most money on this Harry Mud one, and it was like the worst of all of them? Oh no, that was an incredible opportunity to have it feel like such a large sci-fi production. Based on your performance in the first season of Star Trek Discovery, some fans feel like your take on Harry Mud is a bit more, for lack of a better term, homicidal than Roger C. Carmel's original. Do you think that's a fair observation? Do you have? So, uh, you have a sort of headcanon about how your mud develops into Carmel's. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting discussion to have because, first of all, it's balancing tone. In the original series, the second episode of Mud, I Mud, it seems like a comedic episode, but he's going to trap the crew of the Enterprise on that planet with those androids and take their ship. I mean, he's homicidal. We only remember the more comedic aspects of the episode, like the Stella android coming out and the fun hijinks of it. Oh, at least he's seen the episode, thank God. But he really is. Even in the first episode, Mud's Women, he, he's bullying and selling sex slaves, prostitutes, you know, and toying with human lives, and tricking people into buying these intergalactic sex workers. It's pretty dark stuff, but we all remember, or, but all we remember is Roger C. Carmel's amazing comedic performance. But there's a lot more to it than that. I think that's why I didn't have that huge problem about Rain Wilson's performance, because, yeah, I, I do see where he's coming from with this a lot. And, you know, he clearly has watched the episodes with Harry Mudd. 
we talked uh, about that. Um, we talked about that early on with Discovery. First of all, we knew, we all knew the show Discovery was going to be darker. It's going to be during war. It's going to be. It's going to kind of mirror our contemporary times. We don't want it to mirror. Please don't use the word mirror, because then I always think of the mirrored universe that you guys are talking about instead of the mirror universe. You know, mirror universe, the real one. It wasn't time for a lighthearted Star Trek show. It was a time for something a little more grounded. Frankly, I didn't want to just play a comedic character. I didn't want to play comic relief. So it's balancing that tone between the comedic mud and the dastardly mud. That's what makes him so much fun, is you'll laugh at him, and then he'll stab you in the gut with a knife. But then he'll apologize and stitch you up. There's a lot of twists and turns to the character. You know, he, he is kind of right. And I don't, I hate siding with him because remember, this is Rain Wilson. He made fun of us for, for not wanting to spend $7 on an episode of, or a, a, on a month of Discovery or CBS All Access. Man, oh, don't make me side with you. One of the things that fascinates me about Mud is that he seems to be out to make a buck, but he comes from a society where money is no longer used and scarcity has been eliminated. In the original series, you kind of just accept Carmel at face value because it fits into the Western part um, of Gene Roddenberry's original concept of Star Trek as a space Western. What do you think motivates Mud to live the life he leads? Is it just an anti-establishment streak? I think it's an anti-establishment kind of guy. I don't know that it's necessary. The feder uh, that it's necessary necessarily the Federation that he has a gripe with, but he's a con man and a smuggler and a shyster. So he doesn't want the long arm of the law coming down on him. If he's in the Western, he's the snake oil salesman with the wagon coming to town. As soon as the sheriff and the laws, that's why I ended the old West. If you use the old West analogy, we were kind of a law and order and prison and prisons and executions and more sheriffs and more army. That's what he's against. It gets in the way of business. I think for me, I don't think there's much more to it than that. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Oh. After the escape artist, fans are likely to be wondering if and when we can accept, expect to see more of Harry Mudd. Okay, so this is this after now? Now they're, now they're kind of seeming like it's after he left, after he left with his wife which they totally shouldn't have done. They should have never left him leave with his wife. That's a whole rant from, for another time. I've ranted about that many times, especially probably on the episode review. Oh, Lord. After the Escape Artist fans will be likely to wondering what we can expect, if we can expect to see more of Harry Mudd. Okay, I certainly hope there's more of Mudd in store, but I really don't know at this point. But I would definitely be open to playing him again. It's a thrill to play the character. I love it. I love being a part of the world. The Star Trek universe was so important to me growing up. Such an important part of my childhood and my young adulthood. I'm thrilled to be a part of it and hope to be again. And it says we, you, you can find it. You can't find it anywhere else. You know, you can't find it like on Netflix in Europe or anywhere where you can see Discovery there. Which is another kind of indication that, you know, maybe they're not doing so well. So this kind of this kind of gives a little bit more insight into yeah Discovery is not doing so hot behind the scenes, they're scrambling to to copy anything they can like the Orville. This is why we have in, in this trailer actually the, this this little comedic elevator scene at the end here. Here I'll play a little second of it here for you guys, where uh, the this um this ensign is, is uh congested, yeah. Yep, the Saurian, and he sneezes. That's totally something that they would do well in the Orville. Not so well in Discovery, because they don't really have um, humans writing it, apparently. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you think that this kind of indicates that CBS is a CBS All Access, anyways, in a little bit more trouble than they kind of have been letting on, and that they really don't know what they're doing? Um, are you looking forward to this Harry Mud short? Do you even know these exist? Do you know Discovery exists, for that matter? I know a lot of you are new reviewers here. And thank you so much, and welcome to the channel. I do complain a lot about Discovery. Do you even know it's a thing? Um, let, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I am MechaRandom42, and I will see you guys on the next video or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video! Bye!